there are i think i can give a financial disclosure from everybody's side but they will do it i think the thrust that i would like to start with in our section in pediatric ophthalmology and strabismus should be on the part of binocular vision and stereopsis we are all going into a future which is going to be 3d movies and 3d tvs and children will ask us why i can't see a 3d movie like my other friends the goal of strabismologists is therefore much more profound than what we may think from the others so as you are saying we'll go to the horizontal surgery first and wait for the time that other people join in so this is a video on fornix approach surgery for horizontal recessions and resections we are sitting on this side and then we are looking at the muscle when we which we have to operate here an anchor suture is passed at the limbus with the help of a cotton suture this can be any simple suture which you can use with a threaded into a, a retina needle and then about 7 to 8 mm from the limbus a small nick is made in the conjunctiva a 2 mm 3 mm incision is good enough and then you go into the subtenon space by making a nick in the tenon capsule and now you see we have entered the subtenon capsule the lateral rectus is going to be hooked but you pass the hook in the reverse direction first so that you hug the sclera and get the whole muscle in your hook this is the jemison's hook and then we have shifted to the green's hook and now it is covered by the conjunctiva you can see that and we'll use the grafe's hook or the lens hook to uncover the muscle into our operating area and you can see the other pole we are making a small nick in the intramuscular septum this is important because we don't want the muscle to be split and we should now examine that the pole is indeed visible and it's the entire hook of the muscle which has come in your hook okay the sheath is still intact so the muscle doesn't bleed you can see the check ligaments now and they will be directly cut under visualization so this is the lateral rectus the check ligaments are being cut till about 10 mm and then a 6 o vicral suture is being passed in the muscle we'll make a knot in the center and then we'll take two interlocking bites at the two ends of the muscle we want to have a firm grip it should be full thickness bites in the muscle all the bites in the muscle we should take full thickness so that we do not have a partial slippage of the muscle so th this is the interlocking bite on one side and then after that we are going to disinsert the muscle there should be about 0.5 mm stump left and you cauterize the bleeding in uh, point of the insertion after passing the sutures this is been disinserted and now you see this clara we'll clear the area where we want to mark it just to show you here remember what you are holding is in the center with your fixation forceps but you will examine the ends of the muscle from where we will take our marks we should never hold the same point which will be used for marking because that will be displaced by about 1 mm even now the calipers the castrovijo calipers have been marked to 7.5 mm as you can see here and then we have made a gv paint mark at 7.5 mm distance and now we'll take a sub thickness partial thickness bites in the sclera with the spatulated 60 needles both meeting towards one another these two bites are taken at 7.5 mm from the insertion side taking care that we do not perforate the sclera especially so in high myopes or in children when the sclera is thin and also dehydration can make it thinner so be aware of it and keep using the saline drops in between if you are taking time and it's getting dry and then a knot is placed in the center so this is the recession at this moment you can check for your fdt intraoperatively that we have removed any tightness of the muscle which was there otherwise you may have to increase the amount of recession that you had planned and then the conjunctiva is closed with the 8 o vicral suture just two sutures would suffice to close this gap 
and this will lie in the fornix so that is the advantage of the fornix incision that you can keep the sutures away in the fornix and the congestion clears up much faster now coming to the mr resection in the same eye now we'll uh, sit, shift on the opposite side again an anchoring suture is passed so after making the fornix incision just like we did for recession we have hooked the medial rectus this is the other hook as i was saying first jemison hook and then the green hook and then the check ligaments and the intramuscular septum is being cut directly we do not make blunt uh, pushing movements we prefer to do direct cut so that we know what is the sheath and what is the check ligament and we do not have any bleeding then we'll pass another hook just to expose the area that we want to mark for the resection in this case we had planned for a 5 mm resection of the medial rectus so we'll take that mark and use our gv paint so that is being marked here and it's marked from the insertion to the 5 mm that we have now mind you it's important that when we are going to take bites in the muscle we are going to have four needles the cut end that we have got split up from the six cervical both the free ends we pass the retina needles so that we have now four needles which will be used so that we have uh, good interlocking bites on either side of the muscle now here it's important that when we are doing resection we should have four needle bites so that there is a firm or taut muscle which can be kept under check otherwise the chances of slippage is much more with the resection than with recessions and now after uh, the cautery in front of the point that we are going to cut we are going to have a tenotomy done now these this is the scissors being used to tenotomize the point and again if we have done the cautery it will not bleed even though we are now cutting the muscle and finally we'll just do a little bit of cautery on the insertion side so you'll find that if done properly there should be not much of bleeding to bother you even in squint surgeries now these four bites are being taken at the scleral point as you know it's the thinner point uh, the thinnest part of the sclera is there at the insertion of the muscle so we leave a 0.5 mm stump which we can hold it also and then these four bites will be taken and this will complete our resection again do an fdt at the completion of the resection so that you are sure that you have not introduced any tightness in the system the muscles have to be freely moving the eyeball and we should ensure this by doing an fdt and if you find there is a tightness you will have to release these sutures little bit i usually use a one and a half knot at this point which i'll finalize it if i find there is a change not to be required or not done so these will be at the two ends and if you find there is a central sag you might have to take another bite sometimes there will be a slip a splitting of this muscle because you have taken a wider insertion another thing which you would have noted is that we are taking a wide insertion of the muscle so about 7 to 8 mm of the width of the muscle should be spared